All right, now, so we want to speak to uh, Brian Kaimba, who's the Secretary General of the Magistrates Association. He's joining me from our city centre studio uh, to chime in and give insights in regards to this uh, unfortunate incident that took place yesterday in Nakuru. Thank you so much, Brian, for joining us on News Centre. Well, first of all, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this attack or assault on the magistrates. Has it ever happened? And um, is it a surprise that indeed it happened yesterday? Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say that uh, in the judiciary, that was a very unfortunate incident. Uh, when you attack a judicial officer in court, uh, it is symbolically you are attacking the entire administration of justice. So we have had instances in the judiciary where judicial officers have come under mostly direct attack, uh, inappropriate to the magistrate while in open court. But directly attacking a judicial officer, uh, this is one of the few instances that we have witnessed. So it's unfortunate, uh, but the basic tenets of the rule of law is a suspect is presumed to be innocent. So I don't want to pass judgment mm. uh, just in case the matter ends up in court. And therefore, we appear as if the judicial officers have taken already a position over such a matter. All right, uh, Brian, let's talk about the safety of, uh, you know, court officials while they're in court. Like you mentioned, indeed, as, you know, someone is innocent until they're proven guilty. But the truth of the matter is that some of these people are suspected of serious crimes. Um, you know, how protected are court officials, including the magistrates, the judges in courts? Uh, we have had this conversation within ourselves and the other stakeholders in mm -hmm. the administration of justice. Security of judicial officers is not guaranteed. And we are not saying that we are a special category of citizens. Right. Uh, of course, these are matters that affect all of us in the society. It doesn't matter whether you are a judicial officer or you work with the legislative arm of government or in the, exec in the executive. But what I want uh, the public to understand is that the nature of work that we do more often than not exposes us to instances uh, where our security is not guaranteed at all. The kind of cases, for example, in the lower courts, and by the way, 70% or more of justice transacted within the magistrate's level, uh, you'll find that the courts, most magistrates conduct proceedings in, in their chambers. Mm. These are small rooms, small cubes, mm -hmm. which can only accommodate perhaps a maximum of five people. So even if you want to blame the court orderlies, sometimes you look at the infrastructure, infrastructure that you have, you may just have one order in the court who is not even armed most of the times. So we just deliver our duties, we dispense justice, hoping that the litigant who is not happy with the outcome of the court judgment or decision right will pursue the uh, the, the, the legal system i mean the measures i mean uh, of, of of appeal mm. instead of resorting this kind of extra extrajudicial term them extrajudicial acts okay let's mm. let, let's open the conversation to the wider welfare of uh, magistrates uh, in court i mean they are the ones who are really taking care of this backlog of cases do you think that uh, they are well taken care of um are they less appreciated uh, because um, you know in many instances we only you know talk about judges but what about the magistrates welfare uh i wouldn't i wouldn't, I wouldn't want to say that the magistrates are less appreciated uh, one thing that we must uh, accept or admit is that we have a high number of magistrates as compared to the judges. Uh, number two, the judges are constitutional office holders, and by virtue of their positions, they're guaranteed around the clock security in mm. most cases, both at home and at the place of work. Uh, in the magistrates, the numbers we are talking about, magistrates are cut this, we are about, we are more than 500. So we may not uh, expect that a judicial officer, a magistrate for that level, I mean, for that matter, is guaranteed around the clock security. But we must rethink uh, because we have had instances where even a magistrate has been killed uh, outside the court uh, compound. So we must reopen the conversation and really think through on what measures can be put in place within the limited resources that we have 
so that the magistrates can deliver justice without fear of being attacked. So it's a conversation that we must take up uh, within all the stakeholders, the Office of the Chief Justice, the Office of the National Council on Administration of Justice and the Judicial Service Commission. But more so, the government is the main stakeholder. Uh, because you saw we don't, we don't have the police, the judiciary police, maybe in other institutions such exists, but that doesn't happen in this country. All right, thank you so much, Brian Kaimba, for the, your insights on this. He is the Secretary General of the Magistrates Association, commenting on that assault that took place yesterday in Nakuru, where a magistrate was uh, stabbed by a screwdriver after handing in a judgment. All right, so 